first yeah. off, thanks for joining me today, Josh. I really appreciate it. Yeah, um, I heard, well, by the way, it's, it's phenomenal. Great job with it. Oh, thank you. Um, it comes out December the 1st. Um, why do you, let's start from the, you know, a few months or years back. I don't know how far it goes back, but why yeah. did some town uh, want to get involved in films in the first place? Well, for 46 years, Sight and Sound has been bringing the Bible to life on stage in a very big, epic way, a 300-foot wraparound stage with live animals, and the Bible stories are as relevant today as they were when they were written, and so, you know, it started out as a, in 1976 uh, from a, a farmer who was an evangelist who just really wanted to uh, move people's hearts, you know, with the, the gospel coming to life. And a couple of years ago, actually prior to that, but really a couple of years ago with COVID uh, and having shut down our theater, uh, we found the benefit and the impact of our stage shows, which were filmed, getting out onto media airwaves and going all around the world. And so, for example, the Jesus uh, stage production in three days, Easter weekend 2020, was seen by over three million people. Wow. And yeah, in three days. And we were expecting, you know, before COVID shut us down, you know, 1.3 million people seeing a sight and sound show in 12 months. And so it really opened the door wide open for us to consider, you know, that. And the Lord really revealed to us, you know, we're not just a theater company. We're a company of storytellers. And we want to move people's hearts towards truth through the power of story. Uh, you know, Jesus himself had over 50 parables, a third of his teachings, you know, were from a storytelling perspective. And so we know that's our calling. And we wanted to really explore different ways of getting messages out. And so films was always in the back of our minds. It's part of our DNA, you know, with the media side of things. And we decided to just go for it. Um, and I wanted to pick a, a story that was something that we could shoot locally here in Lancaster County, a Christmas film. And the calling for sight and sound films is to tell the stories of figures and events from history that changed okay. the world because Christ first changed them. And so this one just kind of found us, if you will. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. What did you like about this story of um, Henry Wads? I always have to look at his name, Henry Wads. Right? Oh, yeah, it's a tough name. What, what did you like about his story uh, that yeah. made you put it on the screen? Yeah, well, Mike, it's funny that you even just did that right there. I mean, you know, like... Who is my, who is Henry Wadsworth? Well, in 1850s and 60s, he was not only America's most famous poet, he was America's most famous person. He was a celebrity. He was Charles Dickens, you know? In fact, him and Charles Dickens were friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he, Henry Longfellow was a poet and a key influencer on culture back in the 1800s in Americana. He was in the Boston, Massachusetts area. And the thing that drew me to, to this story, aside from the, you know, the connection with the storyteller, the poet, um, was that it was a Christmas story. You know, the true meaning behind the song, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. And that was a poem he wrote uh, right in the middle of the Civil War, 1863, Christmas Day, right on the heels of major tragedy in his life. And it's a really a story about hope. And I felt like that really resonated. Like, the Christmas season, 2022, we've all been through some crisis, some tragedy, uh, and we need to hear a story of new hope. And the symbol of the bell, you know, is so central to this story because it's the, the voice of the church that rings out. And that bell really became a symbol in Henry's life, you know, and um, after tragedy struck, he put his pen down. He wasn't uh, influential at all. And it was through the sound of the bells ringing out that he was inspired to be a voice himself to ring out. And that song is still ringing out every Christmas. I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Uh, sight and Sounds theatrical Broadway style productions are, you know, there's something that you can bring the family to. I'm assuming that you want the films to be the same as well. These are family friendly films Absolutely. that family can come to. Okay. Yeah, uh, for sure. And the, but they're going to be different. You know, our sorry, I didn't want to cut you off there. But I just wanted to share, um, you know, we are being intentional on being different in our film space. Um, our, our stage shows, I think, have a, a real cinematic flair to them. Mm -hmm. And I think our films are going to have a theatrical flair to them. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're, I'm, a, I'm a daddy of four kids, and 
you know, producer, writer, and director. And I want all of our stories to be able to be family friendly. And this one, this one, I believe is. Um, what types of stories are you going to tell? Uh, and I ask that because I, I'm sure a lot of people probably assume that you guys are just going to put Bible stories on film, but you guys are looking at something else. And you alluded to that a second ago, but kind of expand on that, if you will. Um, what types of movies are you guys going to try to, to make after this one? Sight and Sound Films wants to portray the stories of figures and events from history that changed the world because Christ first changed them. Mm. These are uh, stories from our recent history, uh, true stories, uh, stories of major impact on culture even today, because they themselves had a major faith um, uh, promotion, if you will, uh, in, in their time. This, this particular one uh, is a poem that was inspired from life events that is still touching audiences and churches today. And so, yeah, we want to tell true stories, uh, historical uh, accounts uh, of how Christ worked in our modern era. Uh, are, the, are these the same actors and actresses that we see on stage there or? They are for this one. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's really, really did approach films kind of as a grassroots effort. You know, we had Sight and Sound, we have 800 employees full time uh working hard to produce a brand new stage show it takes three and a half years to do that and so shoehorning a whole new endeavor like films into a, a um a system that is already honed in on theaters uh we wanted to be careful that we weren't compromising the production in this case of david uh, when we were shooting the show or the film and so um part of that kind of grassroots effort you know was to uh, look at our own backyard, literally and figuratively. And part of that was to use actors and actresses that we knew were proven on stage and um, see if they could translate to film. And I am so proud of each and every one of them for the, the giant leap it is from a 300 foot wraparound stage where everything's big yes. to cinema where everything's intimate. And, you know, you say more in theater and you show more in film. And uh, it was new for me. It's my first feature film I've ever directed. Uh, it was a first for all the actors. Um, there's a lot of firsts in this one, uh, which is really exciting. I'm, I'm curious. Uh, I've always heard movie actors and actresses say that um, theatrical is the hardest because mm -hmm. it's one take. Everything's one take. Uh, so I'm curious, was it a little bit easier maybe for some of the actors and actresses? What are, what are the differences as an actor yeah. and actress? forms of media no you're you're hitting the nail on the head um and we all kind of allude to it and kind of wander you know are very curious about theater versus film you know what are the differences and 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 really i think what it comes down to is uh both want to tell a, and show a truthful moment and to portray a truthful a truthful moment on stage um you know there's everybody watching and all of the moving parts of live entertainment. And that moment not only has to happen once, but most likely they have to recreate that multiple times a day. Mm. It's sight and sound. We have three shows on a Saturday. Mm. And so that's very rigorous and very difficult for film. They have to portray a truthful moment for at least one take, you know, mm. you get that one take in the can, you can move on and hopefully all the other elements were working, lighting, sound, you know, special effects, things like that. Uh, so there are pros and cons. I have found uh, directing theater actors on stage and uh, film actors for film, but it's really about setting them up to, to uh, create that truthful moment that will convince audiences um, that they're not just channeling this in, but that they're really communicating um, life events. I guess you do have more detail though in the movies though. You're, you're, you know, the audience doesn't see the, the detail in the face in yes. the stage, stage production with movies that, you know, your face is the size of a, I don't <laughs> right. know, whatever. That's uh, so true. That's as well. Yeah, uh, that's definitely, sorry, I don't want to, there's, there's a little bit of a delay. I feel like I'm not being, trying to be rude. Uh, I'll, I will just say um, that is very true. Uh, however, once we started capturing our stage shows, uh, with multi cameras to get them onto DVDs and streaming services, 
our theater actors have gotten pretty familiar with the details and the camera and the face and they love it you know i mean they they want oftentimes to show more than tell and um and in film they certainly had that opportunity to do that and there was one actor in the film jonathan blair who played the role of charlie longfellow uh, who has had film experience before, and he just, he lights up the screen, does a fantastic job. But so did Rachel, who played Fanny, and Steve Atherholt, who played Henry. Uh, like I said, we were rookies at this, and we just kind of jumped into the fray and absolutely fell in love with this uh, medium of storytelling. Is there a set outside the, fiat, the, outside the theater in um, Lancaster? I mean, where, where, where you said it's being made in your county but I, i'm curious mm -hmm. are you guys making a hollywood style set there what's what's going on outside yeah so and one of the ways that we can keep production costs down is to do it ourselves we have a whole company full of carpenters and costumers and wigs and even animals and part of what we have is land and we have a our, our very own back lot it's a, a currently a 20 acre back lot with some facilities connected to it that we were able to build um a, a full-blown Hollywood set. It was a war-torn uh, chapel um, that we built from scratch. I wanted a set piece that emulated the protagonist's condition of heart at that time and also the condition of the nation at that time. And so a blown-out war-torn church with the bell missing from the steeple really helped convey that. And that was the big set that we built. That was the, the, the big set. And we, that was all shot here in our back lot. Um, you can see the theater from the chapel. I mean, everything's pretty close. But then we also shot, you know, in some local um, attractions, Strasburg Railroad uh, for, the, for the train scene, Landis Valley Living Museum for the, the, the parade scene. Um, we shot at Gettysburg during a reenactment, uh, which was fantastic. And, uh, and then Trinity Church in Mannheim, you know, so we, we, one of the cool things about shooting a film here was that we've been able to get out into the community and work arm in arm with you know our neighbors versus in theater everything's under one roof and you, you just don't see the light of day too often when you're <laughs> you know when you're producing a stage show um one or two more questions for you um do you have any plans for a second movie yet do you have any thoughts in your head about what that might be absolutely we do and we we really wanted to test the waters with this first film i heard the bells uh in, in every way shape and form first of all we feel led to do it, uh, but once we jumped into the fray and can reflect back now, um, do we want to do it again? And the answer is yes. Okay. Uh, we also want to see the impact that it had on our loyalists, our audiences who know us as a theater. And we've sure. gotten, uh, we did screenings and private screenings and, um, uh, and focus groups on the film, and we've gotten nothing but overwhelmingly positive responses back. This is really touching people and moving people because it's a much more intimate portrayal. You're up close and personal with these people's lives, and and it is an obscure character. But he he he's a he's a character that once you learn about him, and then you hear that song, you just will never hear it the same way again. And I think it's 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 really taken the passing the baton from the past to the present, and saying these people are still alive. They're still present with us through their stories. And um, so we have a, a another film I've already started work on work on that I am incredibly excited about. Um, it's, it's a true story. Uh, it's a historical account. Um, and, uh, you know, in, in the months and year to come, I'm sure we'll be talking more about that. Uh, American history, we, we mostly stay within the realm of American history or we sometimes go outside of that or do you not know yet? We, we are open-handed to the Lord. It is honestly, and that is not a cliche, we really want, uh, him to to choose the story and us to be obedient and willing to, to hear it and do it. Uh, but currently, uh, the next film will be an American story. Uh, yeah. That doesn't mean that the next one will be. In fact, we may even do a film on a Bible character. You know, we're we're not completely um, we're not going to you know paint ourselves into a corner here. Whatever the Lord wants to do. The film is I heard the bells. It's the backstory to the uh, amazing story of Henry. Wadsworth Longfellow, as Josh tells us, one of the most famous people that many people have never heard of, but they'll hear about They watch this movie and they'll be inspired by it. Josh, is there anything else we should know about it that we didn't ask about? No, I just want to say thank you. It's been great talking with you, Mike, and I really hope that this Christmas season 
Uh, people will come out to the theaters and see this, this story of hope. Uh, I think all of us could use a huge dose of it right now. And that hope that, that Henry finds in Christ is the same hope that we find today. Um, and so, um, you know, tell your friends and, and neighbors to come on out and see this story of new hope. Awesome. God bless. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Mike.